Hello and welcome to the first episode of a new series called How do you have to edit something to get a certain look? Or something like that, the naming isn't final yet. But pretty much what I want to do in these videos is take a raw file and turn it into a specific style of a photographer, of maybe a picture you've seen or something like that and show you the whole process in Lightroom from start to finish. And I'm actually going to take this picture from Uso Hamelainen, I think his name is, as a reference because somebody has sent this picture to me. I'm here on Uso's Instagram and I've actually never heard of him before, but I'm glad I did because I think these pictures are amazing. But if you look at the style, then you can see they're all very, very similar. They're very mysterious, kind of dreamy, washed out, even though there might be a little bit more color in one picture than another. And I decided to take this picture as a reference and just kind of show you what I'm going to do with this picture and how to achieve this look. Because once again, a lot of people have sent me pictures and I just think this is a really good reference for this particular style. Because it's a very popular style from a lot of photographers that apparently a lot of people are interested in. Anyways, I'm just going to start off with this picture right here, raise the shadows real quick so you can just see the picture a little bit better. And the thing here, the most important thing is I think the very washed out kind of look. And there are a lot of different ways you can achieve this in Lightroom. One would be into the minus clarity, another would be for example minus contrast or plus whites. You could even bring up the shadows a lot and make it very washed out that way. But what I actually found to work the best by far is go down here into the effects tool and go into the dehaze. And instead of adding dehaze, actually going into the minus. And what this will do is just make your picture very, very hazy. And I mean, I think it works really, really well. And the cool thing here is that you can actually go back up and go into the plus contrast, for example, or plus clarity, if you really want to do that. Although I think contrast and minus blacks are the most important sliders in this particular case. But you can do all of that while still remaining this kind of hazy and washed out look. So that would be the first step. And then the next very big step is the color. And the color, first of all, I would suggest you to go into the color temperature and just bring it down a little bit, make it a little bit more bluish, but not too far. Just keep it relatively neutral, maybe just a little bit into the blues and then go down into the split toning. And first of all, I'm going to go here into the highlights, click on this little box. And here you can add separate highlight or shadow split toning. So for example, for this particular style, you could go into pretty much any blue tone. But what I think really works well here is kind of a mixture between greens and a very light blue, just like this. And I'm going to fine tune the actual saturation because I don't want to overdo that. You know, I don't want to make it completely unnatural, really just a hint to get the look across and then go into the shadows and do the exact same thing. Maybe just with kind of another blue tone, maybe a little bit of a darker blue tone. And once again, just add a little bit of saturation. This will really depend how much saturation you want on picture to picture, but I think around 30 to 40 works pretty well in this particular case. So now we already have the two most important things done, which is of course the bluish color and also this kind of hazy, washed out, mysterious kind of feel. However, another thing that is also important is to bring down the saturation to get this particular look and that will just make it look even more dreamy, washed out and just works for this particular look. And another thing, I might even add a little bit more contrast at the end. And another very important thing that you can especially see once again in this particular picture, which seems to be kind of the general style of this sort of editing, is to have the foreground kind of very dark and then the sky to be very bright. So what I'm actually going to do here to achieve that is to grab the graduated filter go into the minus exposure first of all for the foreground and just add a graduated filter there. Now I might even go a little bit further and really exaggerate that. You always want to make sure that you have a very soft edge so you don't just have it look like this, you know. This would of course be completely unnatural looking. 
but by having this very soft edge you can really blend it in with the rest of the picture. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with another graduated folder, this time for the sky and of course with plus exposure. And the thing that I've noticed is that you can actually mix plus exposure with some minus dehaze that you now have in the Lightroom CC tool. Once again, go into the minus here and that way you can even exaggerate that effect more. And if you want to do it, you can also add some whites, although it kind of blows the picture in this particular case. And once again, I'm just going to fine tune the positions a little bit here and I do think that this works pretty well. Now from before to after, it's already quite a big difference and it definitely looks a lot more mysterious and dreamy and kind of the look that we want to go for, but it's still a little bit too washed out and there's some dodge and burning needed. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the tonal curve and just go into the point curve and bring that one to medium contrast that will just kind of add even more contrast in a very fine and subtle way over the entire picture. And if that's still not enough, then you can even go into the strong contrast, but I think it's almost a little bit over the top for this picture. So before I go into the dodge and burning, which is probably going to be the last adjustment to get this particular look, I'm just going to go back to the plus exposure graduated filter real quick and add a little bit of white, really just a hint and just fine tune everything a bit more. And I really like that a lot. And I might even add a bit more magenta in the overall tint, really just a hint to get some of that very, very severe greenish cast out of the way. Okay, so now I'm finally going to go into the dodge and burning. And the dodge and burning is, of course, just making individual parts either darker or brighter. You can use the adjustment brush for that or the rail filter. Personally, I prefer the rail filter. And if you take another look at his picture right here, you can see that there's quite a lot of dodge and burning because there are a lot of darkish parts. There are a lot of brightish parts with, uh, which are clearly made with dodge and burning. Even though I don't know which program he used, it's very, very obvious. And I just want to show you how you can use dodge and burning to get this kind of look in this particular picture. So first of all, I'm actually going to start off with the minus exposure because I think, you know, especially if you have kind of a washed out dreamy picture, it is very important to add some filters with minus exposure over some of the dark parts. So you still have some contrast between the very washed out picture and some of the darker areas. And if you want to add dodge and burning, I'd suggest you just to use the rail filter, add 100 feather, invert the mask and just go into the minus exposure. And then you can add filters, right click duplicate as well if you want to take a filter to another spot. And here it's very important to go over the already dark areas and just make them darker because that is exactly what he has done in the picture as well. And that way, once again, you still have a little bit of differentiation and not just everything super washed out and hazy. For example, this spot right here, by the way, you want to make sure that you don't go too far and make it look very unnatural. You know, you always want to keep it within what looks natural, of course. And once again, right click duplicate, also always adjust the sizes and the sliders, or in this case, just the exposure and the amount of it to the actual area so it isn't too much or too little and you really fine tune everything as good as you can. So let's take a quick look. I do think that I went a little bit too far with some of these filters. This is by the way also a great thing about the rail filters that you can just go back to one and adjust the values without having any effect on any other filters. That's not something you could for example do with the adjustment brush. And I'm going to add a few more, maybe just a very small one right here. You know, not even that much exposure. So I really have some differentiation from the washed out to the rest of the parts of the picture. And with that said, I'm actually done with the minus exposure rail filters. There's still plus exposure to be done, but here is from before that and here's after so far. It might seem a little bit spotty at first if you see the direct comparison, but if you look at it for a while, then you will really notice that it looks a lot more differentiating and a lot more interesting, while at the same time still having this very mysterious and kind of washed out overall feel and look to the picture.
Now we're gonna go into the plus exposure dartrum burning and as you can see once again on his picture all of these spots right here I can promise you pretty much that he used plus exposure dartrum burning there because it wouldn't really look like this naturally. So what I'm gonna do is once again grab a rail filter but this time instead of the minus exposure just go into the plus exposure and I'm actually just gonna add a filter real quick. And here it is very important that you also mix that with white and I'm gonna add quite a lot of them right here and also mix that together with the exposure of course to a value that you think is fitting so you don't really want to go too far you know that would be of course way too much but at the same time you do want to have a noticeable effect and I think around well maybe around half a stop in terms of the exposure as well as 100 whites works pretty well here and the thing is if I would just add a filter right here it doesn't look bad but it still is a little bit harsh so what you can do is just add some contrast to make it blend in a bit better with the rest of the picture and I might just have to adjust the actual values a little bit more because it's very location dependent on how much works and how much doesn't work. So once again just right click duplicate and this time I'm gonna go over all of the areas that look kind of dull and just seem like they could use some more plus exposure and also fine tune them to make sure that you at the end have the best possible look and now once again nothing too much and nothing too little. So here just right click duplicate on the rocks, I definitely think there's a lot to be done. I'm just gonna angle it a little bit more, maybe even more plus exposure, mix together with some more contrast and right click and duplicate, go over these rocks as well, make them a little bit more interesting. And there's really a lot that you can do as always with also regular dodge and burning in other pictures. But you always want to make sure that you have it looking natural and that it blends in into the rest of the picture and that you don't just have a bright or a dark spot that sits there in the middle of nothing. So right click duplicate, drag another one over here and I think I'm getting pretty close with the plus touch and burning and here not quite as much needed. Just right click duplicate and maybe you know, go over some of the other spots, a little bit more exposure here, a little bit more exposure there, and there's a lot more that you could do, but I think just for the sake of the video, it should be very clear to what kind of effect the dodge and burning can have. So here is before any dodge and burning, it looks a lot flatter, and here is after, it looks a lot more interesting. Once again, it is really gonna take you a few minutes until you get fully adapt to it and you don't have the previous picture in your mind anymore. And I might even add a few more here to even exaggerate some specific spots more and go into plus exposure. By the way, you could even add a little bit of warmth if you really wanted to. I might just do that with these few filters. And I thought it was done, but apparently not. There were really some more spots that could use some dodge and burning. And here would be one of them. For example, this rock right here doesn't require quite as much exposure as the previous ones. But you can definitely see the difference. It's really worth to also play around with the different filter sizes and maybe even stack them on top of each other. And at the end, just get the most interesting and best look overall. So I think, yeah, not quite that much right here. Right click duplicate and I'm just gonna go over some other spots real quick to even exaggerate the whole lighting scheme more and make it more interesting. And yeah, maybe another one just over here a little bit. And I think with that said, I'm pretty much done. So once again, this is before any dodge and burning, here is after. There's a lot more fine tuning that you could do, but for the video's sake, I think this is really enough. And actually a very last thing that I forgot to mention previously is the vignetting. And vignetting is usually a thing that you can add here in the effects and just add corners or make the corners dark rather over the entire picture. But if you have a bright sky, which you really have here, you might not want it over the entire picture in every corner simultaneously. 
So for that, I'm just gonna grab an adjustment brush, make sure that your feather flow and density is to 100 and also that your auto mask is turned off. And I'm just gonna add some minus exposure, especially over the corners here and the bottom. And don't be afraid to make a really big filter, just something like that. And that also really helps to give less attention towards the corners. And I might have been just a little bit too much here with this particular filter, but I think it should work pretty well. Yeah, once again, just fine tuning a little bit more and also add a little bit more just right here towards the right, fine tune everything, maybe quickly add another one for even more vignetting over just the bottom right. So anyways, I'm gonna say that I'm finally done with this picture. Here is from before any editing, just a raw file, and this is afterwards. It might seem a little bit spotty at first, but if you look at it, especially closely for a few minutes, then it will really start to look natural, at least within that concept of this kind of style of editing. And if I blend in the picture from you, so once again, this is the style right here, and this is what we ended up with. So I hope you found this helpful, maybe you were interested in this particular style. And as you can see, it's quite easy to achieve. It's really just the color mainly, then the haze, the dehaze, moving that one to the left, and then some smaller things like the minus saturation, and of course the dodge and burning. But overall, it's not really that hard to achieve. And as I said at the very start of the video, if you're interested in a particular style from a photographer or a picture, but you don't know how to achieve it, then just send me the image link uh, via the YouTube comments or via Twitter or Facebook. It doesn't matter where the picture is, can be on Instagram, 5MPX, Flickr or wherever. And I might, just might, make a video about it in the future and how to achieve this particular style. I know this has been a very long video, so I'm gonna make it short. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.